the Omni Hospital. Our next panelists are Dr. G. N. Prabhakara, sir, Chairman elect for IMA AMS Headquarter, and Dr. B. Narendra Reddy, sir, who is Honorary Secretary of IMA Telangana. We welcome you also. Now, moving to our to our speakers. Our first speaker will be Dr. Pradyut Bagmare, sir. One second. Dr. Pradyut Vagre, sorry. Dr. Pradyut Vagre, sir. Uh, I'm sorry for that. He is a professor and HOD of SVS Medical College, Mahbub Nagar. Dr. Vagre is a pulmonologist with 34 years of experience and currently professor and HOD of SVS Medical College. Sir is a senior consultant pulmonologist at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad, and managing director of managing director of Kunal Institute of Medical Specialties Private Limited. He is also an honorary consultant pulmonologist to armed forces. His academic achievements are, he was recently conferred with the fellowship of the Academy of Medical Specialists by Indian Medical Association. He is a fellow of American College of Chest Physicians, member of the British Thoracic Society, and also gold member of European Respiratory Society. He was recently elected as a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, FRCP London, UK. He has many publications and presentations to his credit. Welcome you, sir. Moving to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Dr. MSS Mukherjee, sir. Sir is a senior interventional cardiologist and at Medicover Hospital, uh, and he is a director at Pulse Hospital, the uh, heart center, and uh, founder of ex-president of IMA, IMA Kukar, Kukatpal. He is a director at Pulse Heart Center, director of Pulse Heart Charitable Trust, and founder and ex-president of IME Kukat Pali. Reading to the structure of the webinar, uh, we have raised poll in front of you. We, we would request all the participants to start taking the poll questions. After this, I will hand over the speech to uh, the stage to Dr. Sanjeev, sir, who will request our... Uh, Dr. J. A. Jalal, sir, to do the huh? inaugural speech and all the panelists to share their insights about COVID-19. Then the session will begin with the uh, uh, speaker's talk. Our first talk will be on COVID-19 reinfections after vaccine. Uh, after vaccination by Dr. Pradyut Vagre, sir. And then it will be followed by management and treatment of COVID-19 after vaccinations by Dr. MSS Mukherjee, sir. If you have any questions, we would request you to type in Q&A section. The questions will be answered at the end of the session by our panelists. A vote of thanks will be shared by Dr. Sanjeev, sir, at the end of the session. We will also raise the second poll at the end of the session. General instructions for all the participants. All the participants are muted. And if you have any queries or questions, please type in Q&A section. We are recording this session and the recording will be available in a couple of days and we will be notifying you via emailers. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to thank Myland Pharmaceutical for supporting us in the series of COVID-19 webinars. Myland Pharmaceuticals is a Viatris company, is one of the world's <coughs> leading pharmaceutical company with a mission to provide 7 billion people access to high quality medicine. With a significant contribution in battle against tuberculosis, HIV, and hepatitis across the globe, Mylan is again at the forefront of fight against COVID-19 with its care portfolio comprising of remdesivir and febiparavir. I would also like to introduce Panacea, which is a, a COVID-19 patient rehabilitation center. The program is helping to boost immunity, mental strength, and good diet. Panacea brings virtual sessions on yoga, depression, anxiety, stress management, nutrition, and mental health to help overcome post-COVID-19 anxiety, fear, and mental trauma and strength. There are special sessions by renowned pulmonologists, neurologists, cardiologists, and endocrinologists. If you need to want to know more about Panacea, you can please visit the website seen in front of your screen. Now, I will stop sharing the screen and would request Sanjeev sir to please welcome our panelists and participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am AMS uh, headquarters, which is situated in Hyderabad but uh, it affiliated to IMA all over India. <coughs> we are, uh, till now, uh, as most of the branches were doing uh, webinars, we didn't want to uh, go into the picture and uh, rebulk people with more webinars. But all said and done, uh, Dr. Mayuri, uh, well-known associate with me from a long time, she called me and said, no, we have to do it. I thought IMA AMS must start a, a national webinar-like thing. And this is the first one in the series uh, to come. 
I welcome all the participants who have joined. I'm happy to see more than 206 people coming, but I'm expecting more than uh, around 1,000 people to join. Awesome. I welcome uh, the panelists and our chairman, Dr. Uh, Srihari Rao, a very dynamic personality and uh, a man who always rises from the front and does many things. I am very happy to see uh, our uh, chairman, elect Dr. G.N. Prabhakara, who is from Karnataka. He has hosted an excellent conference two years back for uh, the IMA there. Along with uh, our uh, my dear friend, Dr. B. Narendra Reddy, who is also the secretary of IMA Telangana State, Dr. Srirang Apkari, and my elder brother, Dr. Mohan Gupta, uh, helping him, me out whenever it is uh, needed the most. Uh, we are just awaiting uh, the presence of our uh, national president. I just called him up. He's going to join in a few minutes. And I'm very happy to share that we have two very learned uh, speakers. Dr. Pratyut Vakaris name is well known in uh, Telangana and uh, AP and he has been in forefront in uh, many ways in uh, dealing with respiratory conditions. I have seen him uh, working right from uh, the time I did my medicine and joined uh, the thing. And uh, Mukherjee, a very close friend of mine, uh, today has given us uh, two hours time every day is on TV uh, for hours together regarding COVID and uh, heart conditions. And both of them are really excellent speakers. I now request our uh, chairman, Dr. Tagumati uh, Sriyari Rao, the radiologist of uh, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, most probably we'll see him as an upcoming political leader first to give a welcome address. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'm audible, sir. Yeah, you're audible. <clears throat> I welcome you all for today's live webinar on COVID-19 reinfection after vaccination, management and treatment. On behalf of IMAMS headquarters, I welcome you all. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. I really feel proud of and privileged to extend heartily welcome to our beloved distinguished chief guest of today, the dynamic proactive leader of medical profession and our national president, Professor Dr. J. J. Lal. He is a professor of surgery at Trinu Valley Medical College, high ground Trinu Valley. Practices at the Anamal Hospital, Kujuturai, Kanyakumari District, Tamil Nadu. Our national president is also having the responsibilities of the head of the IMA UNESCO Bioethics and a member board of studies, the Tamil Nadu, Dr. MGR Medical University an honorary professor in AMS, National Faculty of Various Scientific Studies, oh, coordinator, Kumar Young Scientist, Scientific Jealous. Program, received so many awards from district collector to state oh. government, best teacher award from Tamil Nadu, Dr. MJR oh. University and National IMA, and published Pardon. textbook Tell me, of family medicine, index international editor, edition, 30 research articles in index journals, Editorial board member in five international journals. His motto is love your neighbor as you love yourself. We are honored to have our honorary secretary general, Dr. Jayesh Manohar Lele. Works in the field of podiatry to provide residents of Mumbai with needed therapeutic care as a general physician. He held various posts in IMA at branch, state, and national level, state president IMA 2015 and 16, and honorary secretary IMA as hospital board of India 2016 to 2020. The member of Maharashtra Medical Council. I welcome our AMS chairman elect, past national vice president Dr. J.N. Prabhakara. I also welcome our immediate past chairman AMS and past national vice president Dr. Ashraf. I welcome First Secretary Mohan Gupta, brother, I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to welcome our speakers of today. First speaker, Dr. Pratyut Vagre, he is a senior pharmacist from Hyderabad, a security the prestigious fellowship of Royal College of Physicians, London. At present, Dr. Vagre is professor at HOD of Pulmonary Medicine at SVS Medical College, Mahbunagar, senior column. Consultant, pulmonologist at 
Apollo Hospital Jubilee Hills. He is also managing director for Punal Institute of Medical Specialty an honor of pulmonologist to the armed forces of india fella american college chest physician usa association member of british thoracic society uk and the gold member of the european respiratory society and was our second speaker most visible person every day in our telugu speaking people in the, all over india dr ms mukherjee is one of the most renowned and widely respected senior international cardiologist in hyderabad he holds a rare double degree in cardiology both dm and dnb in cardiology he works at pulse art center in kphb and medicover hospital madapur hyderabad he is a specialist in the management of hypertension as certified by the american society of hypertension He frequently conducts sessions for the students regarding the art and science of ECG reading. He constantly shares his knowledge with his medical fraternity through social media videos. Nowadays, he regularly appears on a lot of television channels as an invited expert to guide about COVID-19 disease, vaccination, and its variants. I am regularly following his presentations in TV. Though he is acquired close to many hearts, Dr. Bhakarji won okay, heart lies to the his charity work. Ah, he says charity ah, should not only run by on your Facebook; it should run in our your units. So you have to show your in the in blood. My regards to our national past presidents, past honorable secretary generals, and state chairmen and secretaries, and my dear delegates. i would also like to offer my appreciation to all the people who made this meeting in such a hard times our secretary ams headquarters brother sanjeev singh yadav and vice chairman dr surekhan joint secretaries at ams dr b narendra reddy dr g sampat our honorary editor annals ima ams dr shiring abkar all of you know my miss hard working personality in our ima ams staff Sri Mat Mrs Sarita, my thanks to medical learning up. I may finally believe knowledge is power, and knowledge is empowered to doctors or our society. The seventh responsibility. So we have to send the current issue of COVID nineteen reinfection after vaccination. As all of you know, the vaccination actually effectiveness may be vary depending on underlying immune system and exposure risk. the vaccines for covid-19 effective in preventing disease with some more than 90% effective the science scientific scientists have seen that the vaccines will protect most people for the this few months after getting their second dose they don't have the data on the long term this vaccination provide let us know the about management and treatment of covid-19 reinfections after vaccination by our eminent speakers thank you thank you dr sreehari there is there looks to be some problem in dr jailal joining uh, uh, ask my unit to once again uh, uh, check into that Correct. in the meantime i request our uh, incoming chairman dr uh, prabhakar to say a few words dr jain prabhakar please unmute uh, yeah. sir so good evening everyone uh, uh, first of all i Uh, thank uh, our uh, chairman ams dr shriari rao and the secretary on uh, <coughs> yadav sir uh, actually this is a very good uh, topic you have selected uh, for this uh, present uh, situation because so many people uh, prabhakar, dr prabhakar one minute we welcome our uh, national president dr jayalal yeah. who has joined yes. us uh, there was some issue but anyway okay. we are happy to see him here please 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 dr prabhakar please continue hello prabhakar please continue okay 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 yeah <clears throat> so i uh, welcome our uh, president dr jailal and uh, all the the uh, speakers of both uh, pulmonologist and the cardiologist uh, today's 
topic is really wonderful and uh, i'm happy to see there are uh, more than uh, 300 people there participating already and uh, expecting more and uh, nearly 2000 uh, registered it seems so it's a good topic because uh, we are facing a lot of problems and it is very difficult to convince even the doctors themselves uh, the reinfections after the vaccination and also after the uh, covid uh, this thing uh, I, since it is a scientific session i i don't want to take much time uh, uh, sanjeev sir so let us let let us continue with the scientific session thank you thank you dr prabhakar uh, it was nice listening to you now before the scientific session uh, commences we request our national president dr j a jailal uh, very eminent surgeon and very great personality to address us as the chief guest and after that we'll start our uh, scientific uh, lecture dr jailal sir uh, i'd request you to please uh, speak sir yeah thank you uh, the, the chairman of the aims dr sri hari rao sir not yes, visible sir sir is not my good uh, no, he is visible he is visible are able to hear now yes yes sir yes sir we can hear you we can, we can hear, hear you sir. sir we can hear you okay we can see yeah, you all brother dr sanjeev yadav very respectable professor of surgery uh, and the president the chairman elect of the ams dr g n prabhakara uh, the speakers of this day and uh, distinguished members i think uh, nice 315 members have joined the former secretary of the ams uh, sanjeev yadav dr abkari dr uh, ashraf dr mugerji and other colleagues i am extremely happy that uh, even amidst the crisis time of this pandemic they both the colleges college of general practitioners and the academy of medical speciality are doing a human service yesterday we had a very good uh, topic discussion on the pediatric uh, vaccination and the how to prepare for the third wave by the college of general practitioners today i am so happy that ams is organizing a meeting and the post vaccination and the infection what are the the problems we are facing and how to mitigate them uh, this is most important at this moment of the crisis time and we propagate this knowledge and division to the people but whatever it is we 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 know for sure in this pandemic what we are uh, uh, getting uh, is uh, all those who are uh, vaccinated uh, definitely more uh, than 95 to 96 percentage of them were much safer even if they get an infection their uh, the lung infection was very less the mortality also very less uh, even medical community also what we do we have lost 650 people in this uh, second wave Uh, many of them were not vaccinated and uh, or somebody has a single vaccinated yes some people who had uh, both vaccines still comorbidity they have died but it is a it is a, a mystery to be understood and it is i am sure uh, the panel expert speakers will be able to uh, to give some some uh, uh, idea or uh, input on that why we are able to uh, still people are getting infection and also they will also tell us and how to solve that issue also whether we are taking the vaccination in appropriate way whether the vaccine storage is done being properly done whether the interval in which we are taking vaccination is right so all these questions will be I am sure that definitely you will be answered so we are in a very critical situation at this world today our one end we are known we are now affected by the unknown uh, the, the unseen virus corona and another end the our professional doctors are being assaulted being professionally assaulted professionals are assaulted and the people are uh, battling for life at this critical situation what we see in assam what we see in up west bengal karnataka and everywhere we are seeing there is a this pandemic uh, crisis is there like vaccination here is also there is a law is there so though there is a law still there is an uh, attack is happening so like what we talked today that uh, reinfection after vaccination now we are seeing the reattack on doctors after the law so what to do for that and we need to press and we need to see to that something should be done on this both an assault on the profession and professionals need to be stopped so indian medical association as a as a professional organization of our medical fraternity has to work uh, do something concrete on this so we have now called for a nationwide protest day 
on 18th of this month to protest against the assault happening by unknown unscientific people and also anti social elements uh, so you see in this platform as there is a 336 people are there as our national president i make an appeal to all of you keep uh, december i mean uh, june 18th as a national protest day we are only asking you to close the morning op but that is only a symbolic protest but you need to take personally take something to show that we all are affected by this uh, abuse and assault the study says 75 to 80% of the doctor in his lifetime at least one or two times he is faced with some assault and abuse something if you are not going to do our younger generation will not be able to work with empathy and focus in this allopathic profession so this is a, a very very solid appeal to i make every one of you whatever the platform you get whatever the opportunity you get please propagate the message of assault on doctors and protection needed for the doctors we call it as a save the saviors as, as our theme uh, to for this going ahead with the people. there are a lot of like minded people good minded people to support us but when all of us can unitedly raise this voice i am sure that we will be able to move on the government and the government will be able to come out with a central law with a stringent i have in uh, uh, crpc and ipc provision and also make security in the hospitals as important thing i know uh, people like uh, prabhakar rao no when they are running a medical college there is lot of uh, msr minimum standard requirement on the faculty on the infrastructure but there is no uh, minimum standard requirement on the security aspect so now we are going to ensure and request the government to see to that every hospital have a security as a minimum standard security protocol should be there and the people hospital should be pro- uh, declared as a protected zone and the speedy fast track trial should be there to punish those people so to make this to happen it cannot be done only by the leaders of indian medical association every one of you should feel that ima is your own body your own organization the little effort you are going to prote- to put to protect our profession to safeguard our profession so with folded hand i appeal to you do not forget the day june 18 is a day to rejuvenate our profession to protect our profession and protect our young doctors who are undergoing multiple assault on this day so when you uh, declare your hospital closure mm-hmm. of the opd on that day and do and the local level plan some agitation some protest to see to that and this is exhibited and uh, our routine works like this academic work will continue i am so thankful once again to ams for organizing this meeting this will give us some uh, definitely hope that we will be able to overcome this disease by promoting vaccination and uh, i mean uh, to uh, to up- adapting to the covid appropriate behaviors thank you very much for this opportunity uh, as we are continuously meeting with the states by <coughs> one state by other state so i will not be able to be here fully with you but i could find some time away from the meeting and to uh, uh, be with you at this time. thank you very much for this opportunity thank you dr uh, jailal sir right from incision to the diagnosis everything has been perfectly put in and the surgery has to be executed on the 18th so i request everybody to see that uh, i am sorry both the speakers are physicians but all said and done uh, these are the t- words i use for uh, Uh, you see uh, dr jayalal is not a simple person uh, twice he has been a great host at kanyakumari and uh, things he does such in such a meticulous manner and we are very happy it is not a uh, opportunity to you sir it is an honor for us that you are addressing uh, the ima ams uh, first webinar session by the headquarters office it is really a great pressure now uh, i am not pressure it is pleasure now uh, we'll send you a recorded version of this uh, okay. talk uh, once uh, once it is recorded now uh, without uh, much ado i request dr pradyut vagare our first speaker to speak on reinfections i don't know some today morning i am getting uh, telephone calls from press asking why it is called reinfection so that has to be in particularly meted out so that by 9 o'clock in the evening i have to send a message to them why it is reinfection dr pradyut vagare the screen is yours the show is yours please continue thank you sir i would like to just uh, share my screen
and is my slide visible yes uh, you are on on uh, the show but your slide has not come your face is there not come Yes, now, uh, now yes. the screen. Yes, it is there. It's there. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. At the outset, I would like to thank the Indian Medical Association and Academy of Medical Specialities, and also the Medical Learning Hub, for arranging and inviting me today to please share my views on this interesting topic. What we, I will do today is I will take you around the CDC updates on this topic followed by our own ICMR updates, and then we move on to the next topic of management and treatment. So the impact of COVID, we all know, has been tremendous, both on the economically as well as on the employment rates. All the, all the countries in the world, especially the third world countries and developing countries like our country, and uh, we have really suffered a lot of economic impact, resulting in a tremendous unemployment rate. We know that without a vaccine, the virus can enter the cell and cause havoc. It can cause increasing inflammation and progression of the disease with attendant complications. But it is only the vaccine which can help us in preventing the entry of this virus and preventing us from getting infected. Having said that, a lot of uh, media reports came in between that people are getting infected, doctors are getting infected with COVID-19 even after getting two doses of vaccine. So then is there any need to panic? What should we do if we test positive? Why are we getting infected? Let us answer all these questions today. So do COVID-19 vaccines really give us protection? Well, the studies have shown that COVID-19 vaccines are definitely effective in preventing infection from COVID. But even if we happen to get infected, we will not get seriously ill with COVID and its complications. So it is always better to go ahead and take a vaccination. We are learning many things about this COVID vaccination. We are still learning how well these vaccines are preventing the spread of virus from us. Number two, we are still learning how long does the immunity last with the vaccines. We don't know. It varies. Some people are sitting three months, some people are sitting up to one year. So we still don't know. A lot of work is going on upon the duration of immunity conferred by these vaccines. And also, we are still learning whether these vaccines are effective against the new variants, which every day we hear of a new variant, and what is the current status of these vaccines on the variants which are causing COVID-19. So before we move on, let us define what is meant or uh, meant actually by breakthrough infections. Well, breakthrough infections is defined as the detection of a SARS-CoV-2 RNA or its antigen in a respiratory specimen, which is collected from a person 14 days or after completion of a recommended dose of vaccine. That is, you have taken two doses of vaccine after 14 days. If you are still detecting SARS-CoV RNA, then it is called as a breakthrough infection. The CDC's statements about COVID-19 says that the COVID vaccines are definitely effective, but still small percentage of people are getting infected, even though they are fully vaccinated. Because we know probably th these are due to the new variants of the virus. We are also aware that no vaccine is 100% protective all the time. We have been seeing so many vaccines earlier. Now, we still see many breakthrough cases in almost all the vaccines. I think except smallpox vaccine, every other vaccine, have, we have seen some of the breakthrough cases. Persons could be infected either just before taking the vaccination or just after taking the vaccination and they can get sick as well. We should be aware that it typically takes about two weeks, 14 days for the, our body to build robust immune response after the two weeks after the second dose of the vaccine. Only then we have a robust immune response developed in our body. So a person could get sick if the vaccine had not had enough time to provide protection, that is before the development of this robust immune response, if he gets infected, he can get sick with COVID-19. But we also know that vaccination will definitely, even if you get infected, it will be less severe in those who get vaccinated. And so there will be less amount of hospitalization and death. 
So overall, we know that the risk of hospitalization and death among those who are fully vaccinated is much lower when compared to those who are not vaccinated and uh, though with, when compared to similar risk factors. CDC tried on working to identify certain patterns or trends which can actually suggest us that particular people are going to get complications. But no, so far, to date, there no unusual patterns have been detected in the data to suggest that this particular group of people can go into complications. So COVID-19 vaccines then help us to protect people who are vaccinated from getting COVID-19, or even if we get infected, we are prevented from getting the risk of hospitalization and death. So what is the current CDC statement vis-a-vis -vis mRNA COVID vaccines? The CDC recommends that two or more weeks following a single dose of the mRNA vaccine, it is giving us 80% reduction in risk and the protection goes up to 90% once two or more weeks pass after the second dose. So suggesting that we can get infected, but it will be less uh, severe disease resulting in less amount of hospitalization and death. Now, having said this, there is an interesting case report published in the New England Journal of Medicine recently, where they have studied 417 fully vaccinated people in the United States, and they found two cases of COVID-19 uh, from these breakthrough infections. And both, uh, all these, the, both these participants have been vaccinated with Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. The two who tested positive, both were women and both had mild symptoms and both of them recovered quickly. One was after day 19 of the vaccination and the second case was day 36 after the vaccination. So they got infected, that, but they were mildly infected. So these observations indicate that there is a potential risk of illness after successful vaccination. And probably this subsequent infection was due to a variant viruses and they therefore provide us support to make a continuous efforts not only to prevent and diagnose infections, but also to characterize the variants in the vaccinated persons who got uh, infected. Then this report uh, is published from California. This, uh, they have studied the uh, infections, that the breakthrough infections from December 2020 to February 2021. And they have characterized the number of days when the infection increases. If we have, if we have seen in this slide, the first two weeks after the dose one, is the time when most of the people are liable to get new infections. Whereas as the time passes, that is two weeks pass after the dose two of the vaccine, and then the number of new infections drastically reduce. That's exactly the reason because the robust immune response takes at least 14 days after the second dose of the vaccination. This uh, report was published again in uh, up to 24th May, 2021, they have studied the statistics of the hospitalized or fatal cases among the COVID-19 breakthrough cases in the United States. And they found that 20 out of 2,298 patients who were hospitalized, about 23% of them were asymptomatic or actually they were not related to COVID-19. Similarly, persons who had died in the hospital, about 16% of these fatal cases were actually not related to COVID-19. So what, if, what it surmises here is it can, it can prevent infection, it can get us only mild disease, but there are always a few variants which escape the immune system of the virus and of, of the vaccine, and they can result in hospitalizations and death. So that small amount of risk always lingers on. This is again statistics from the CDC, which shows that 27% of the vaccine breakthrough infections were asymptomatic, 10% were hospitalized, and it also shows that this is mostly due to, as you can see in the last, this is mostly due to all these variants which have been detected recently. They have been labeled as variants of concern. So probably these variants are somehow escaping the immune mechanism uh, produced by the vaccine. These reports tells us that post mRNA vaccine, the viral load was substantially reduced for infections occurring 12 to 13 days after the first dose of vaccine. That is the first slide is the, the first graph is the from days one to 11 when both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated had the same risk. But as the days pass from 12 to 37, the viral load tends to get reduced in those who are vaccinated. So these reduced viral loads in the vaccinated population hint at a potentially lower viral shedding potentially lower contagiousness, lower infectiousness, thereby 
can further contributing to vaccine effect on the virus spread. This again shows the, that the, it is the predominantly the variants which are causing this problem of breakthrough infections. So they underscore the importance of the ongoing race between immunization and natural selection of potential viral escape mutants. So that's the reason why it is always said that there is a need to maintain layers of mitigation strategies, including serial testing, not only of the symptomatic patients, but also of the asymptomatic patients to pick up these variants, analyzes, analyze them, and make it the rapid genome sequencing of this SARS-CoV RNA obtained from a variety of high-risk persons. So this sequencing will help us to know more variants, and then we can study them against the existing vaccinations. As seen in this slide, again, it is shown that the persons who were, uh, uh, you know, who were fully vaccinated, there they had uh, breakthrough infections predominantly with the B1351 variant. Whereas those who were partially vaccinated individuals were predominantly infected with B117. Therefore, it is again important to track the viral variants. You know, we have to track the viral variants in a rigorous framework. So tracking the variants, increasing the vaccination are still the two golden rules of you know, achieving a successful outcome. Having said about the CDC, now let us move on to our own data, that is Indian scenario of the ICMR. We have the ICMR has come to the conclusion that about two to four people from a vaccinated group of 10,000 had so far been detected to be infected with the breakthrough infections of COVID-19. And we have two vaccines as of now, third is going to come soon. The infection rate after the second dose of Covaxin was found to be 0 0.04 as per the ICMR data and that from the COVID shield was 0.03%. So basically not much of a difference between the two. And most of these breakthrough infections, which we see here are mild. Therefore, it was uh, surmised that vaccines provided protection against moderate to severe COVID-19 infections. This recent study was published from the Postgraduate Institute in Chandigarh. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and the rate of breakthrough COVID infections was studied. It was found that it was 16 per thousand, that is 1.6%, which is slightly higher than the ICMR data with predominantly B16172 variant. That is the Delta variant, which was majorly responsible for causing this breakthrough infections. This is a very recent study, uh, probably after the second wave when the Delta variant actually caused this uh, breakthrough infections. It was also found that the two-dose COVID-19 vaccine helps us in battling through these infections and which are triggered mostly by the infectious Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2. So in spite of the Delta variant, if we take the, two, the vaccinations, definitely it will going to prevent us, except from the minor group of people which can still succumb to the disease. Then we should change slightly. We should know what is reinfection. Reinfection is defined in any individual who has tested yes, positive for SARS-CoV-2 on two separate occasions, either by an RT-PCR test or by a rapid antigen test. And the interval between the two positive tests should be at least 102 days and with one negative molecular test in between. So that is the definition of reinfection. And by this reinfection definition, the, the ICMR has found that reinfection in India is to the tune of 4.5% in the COVID infected patients. That is 4.5% of patients can get reinfected with again a COVID-19 infection. The findings of this 4.5% may be of slight concern because this data was uh, produced uh, from eight months from January 2020 to October 2020. But now after the increasing fresh cases in the second wave and the current scenario, this may be much uh, higher. We don't have the current percentage right now. So that is why it is always very important and mandatory to adopt a protective behavior even after getting infected or even after getting vaccination. So then having said about reinfection, let us now move on to the what are the current variants which are troubling us a lot. Well, we have uh, the four variants so far, the B117, which originated in the UK or otherwise called as the alpha variant. B1.351, which came from South Africa, now called the beta variant by the WHO. P1, that is, came from Brazil. It is now called the gamma variant. And the Indian origin is the B16172, or called the delta variant. 
Now, among the Indian studies which are published by ICMR recently, in, in cases of breakthrough infections, our scientists have found that predominantly two lineages have dominated these breakthrough infections. One is B1617.1, that's the kappa, comprised 8%, but predominantly it was the B1617.2, the delta, which comprised 76% of the breakthrough infections recently. So that is the main culprit. And work is going on to see how far the vaccines are able to protect against this delta variant. It was also found that in the past uh, February and March, when the Delhi had a very high uh, rate, it was the predominant alpha variant. But now in this second wave, the alpha variant was found to be low. It is the delta which has taken over this one. And uh, one of the study in uh, from the ICMR group also shows that there is in the delta variant, there's again a new mut mutation occurring, which is called as P478K. And the scientists believe that this submutation of the Delta variant has a role in to play in increasing the you know infiltration of the human cells by the coronavirus. So probably this is the most dangerous part of the Delta virus. So this Delta uh, variant is definitely a cause for concern now because this is one of the most dominant one seen in India. It is found that in this Delta variant there are twelve mutations in its spike protein. Okay, when compared to the original SARS-CoV-2, when compared to original SARS-CoV-2, this Delta variant has found to have 12 mutations in spike protein, which was and which is a very, very important thing to know. And it also has been seen that there appear to be more number of uh, ACE2 enzymes, which are aiding the entry of the coronavirus into the alveolar cell. And this has been again found around these mutations L4Y2R and T478K. A study by the Public Health England has shown that the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca vaccines in, in uh, studied in the UK were found to be only 33% effective against the symptomatic disease occurring from this Delta variant three weeks after the first dose. They have not yet studied the, after the second dose. Whereas they were 50% effective against the original B117 or the alpha variant, which came from the UK. So this Delta variant somehow seems to be more, you know, infectious and more uh, of a serious type of a nature. Our data indicates that this uh, result, this Delta variant has resulted in increased surges, increased infectivity, but without any increase in the case fatality rate. What it means is it has infecting more number of patients, but probably the fatality because of this seems to be less. People are going to the hospital, but they are recovering and coming back. But their chance of infecting others, especially though with comorbidities with this variant can be a very dangerous thing. And they also estimated that the transmissibility of this variant is 50% greater than the earlier alpha variant. Number three, they found out that the viral load of this Delta variant appears to be higher than that of the UK variant. And so does the vaccination breakthrough infection also is much more common with Delta variant as we have seen in the earlier studies when compared to the alpha variant. So this B61172, that is the Delta variant is capable of creating very fast rising outbreaks of COVID-19 with vaccination breakthrough infections. So somehow we have to tackle this variant now. A study in Lancet, uh, which was comparing antibodies generated due to vaccines in those uh, you know, who were afflicted by the varying strains of COVID of, uh, in the UK, they found that uh, these vaccines were nearly the, the, you know, the antibodies produced by these vaccines were six fold reduced against the Delta variant, where when compared to 2.6 times against the Alpha variant, when both of them were compared against the Wuhan. Wuhan strain. So what it means is that the antibodies produced, the protective antibodies produced against the Delta strain were very much reduced. Okay, then when compared to the alpha variant and when, can, when compared to the original Wuhan strain. So this Delta variant is somehow able to escape the immune mechanism of the vaccines. Studies from ICMR in India have also shown that fewer antibodies were expressed by the vaccines in those who were vaccinated with both Covaxin and Covishield when they were when they were tested against the Delta strain in labs. But there was not much difference in breakthrough infections was found between two vaccines. The, as I said, Covaxin only 0.13% they developed 
uh, breakthrough reinfections and with covid shield only 0 0.07 developed breakthrough reinfections so then another new variant has been detected just i think very very recently this was the national institute of virology in pune detected a new variant they have labeled it as b1128.2 through the genome sequencing of samples collected from those patients who had traveled to india from uk and brazil so these patients were carrying these passengers were carrying this variant with them now this variant is likely to cause more severe symptoms and whether it is as dangerous as a delta or not work is still going on and it is known to produce severe symptoms and it has known to produce increased disease severity so we have to be careful against this variant as well it is known in hamsters that this variant can present with severe weight loss and it can also cause a very severe lung pathology so that is some of the classical findings of the what they have reported with this new variant and uh, this in within this short time they have found so far that covaxin is showing significant amount of boosting antibodies and neutralizing efficacy against this variant so that is a very very heartening and a, you know happy sign to know that our vaccines are working against this new variant as well so this this is see by having this so many variants causing problem and escaping the vaccine mechanism this makes it all the more important to have a strong genomic surveillance and to characterize the sars cov2 variants to understand their pathogenicity their potential to escape the immune uh, immune mechanism produced by the vaccines and to take suitable countermeasures so currently there are about 10 labs under uh, insa cog that is indian sars cov genome sequencing consortia and these 10 labs have sequenced around 30000 samples of this variant so far so a lot of work is going on and 18 more labs are being added to this consortium so very short we'll have more information on the variants uh, their severity and the response to the vaccines so then summarizing uh, i think what should we know about the covid-19 breakthrough infections we should know that a small percentage of people who are fully vaccinated against covid-19 will still develop covid-19 illness some fully vaccinated people might have infections but they may not have any symptoms that is they may be asymptomatic infections people these are the most you know uh, dangerous people i will say because they are not aware of their disease and they can spread to other people also and if they spread these variants to one with associated comorbidities the other person can be in trouble so it is possible that a person could be infected either just before getting the vaccination or just after getting the vaccination and he can get sick with the disease we should realize that it typically takes 2 weeks for the body to build protection after vaccination so we have to wait for 2 weeks after the second dose to get a robust immune response for our t cells and b cells to produce enough antibodies to fight the virus so if you a person can still get infected and get sick if this vaccine had not have enough time to provide protection that is if he gets infected before this time of 14 days post second dose so if you if one gets covid 19 after vaccination we have seen that the symptoms are very very less they might be less severe but few of them can go into hospitalization so covid 19 vaccines are an essential tool to protect people against covid 19 illness including against new variants as we have seen in the recent studies with covaxin and covid shield so these data then underscore the critical importance of continued public health mitigation measures please don't forget the mask don't forget the physical distancing important to record the screen for daily symptoms and do regular testing including genome sequencing and this should continue even in environments with high incidence of vaccination until the herd immunity is reached at a stage they say that until 70 percent of the population is vaccinated and then only the herd immunity will be possible so until that stage we have to be extremely cautious and continue pursuing our efforts of vaccinating genome sequencing and also masking physical distancing hand washing etc so then let us fight covid within a uh, united way let us get all get a covid vaccination let us follow the covid protocol of washing our hands covering the mouth and nose with a mask don't forget this even if you are vaccinated and avoid going to crowded areas and please maintain social distancing and if 
please don't go by the whatsapp university messages don't get confused by the whatsapp messages follow the scientific data which is regularly published by the icmr and the cdc so thank you so much for your attention and any questions i will be glad to answer thank you dr pradeep bagre uh, as always uh, very lucid presentation uh, i have a small uh, uh, doubt shall we go in with the question answer now only or after uh, the whole session is over i think so, after the after the both sessions better yeah that will be a better thing better. Uh, thank yes. you pradeep just take some rest and uh, now i request our uh, dr mukherjee uh, cardiologist with a heart towards covid to please address us regarding uh, his topic management and treatment of covid-19 after vaccination the most commonly asked question to everybody yeah good evening everyone thank you for the great introduction the introduction uh, sanjay singh sir and uh, sriyara garu thank you so much and uh, pradyum sir you made my job really easy you gave a very eloquent speech and then i'll try to follow it up and then uh, slightly brush up things a bit okay uh, today we are a worried nation we are worried nation because uh, though we have a second wave we are not sure whether we'll land in a much worse third wave we are not sure whether we'll be able to complete our vaccinations before the third wave hits moreover we are more worried that the vaccination alone may not be sufficient to prevent a third wave this is because we have doubts about the efficacy of the vaccinations so the important thing about vaccination is whether the efficacy will be translated into real time situation now in clinical studies the efficacy what we see in real world does it translate into the effectiveness that is the difference between the efficacy and effectiveness efficacy means in a clinical trial situation effectiveness of a vaccine is in the real life situation does the efficacy turn into effectiveness and then will will we be safer from a third wave and more importantly will our children be safer from a third wave this is the question that bugs everyone and then the questions arise as to the efficacy of the vaccines because we have heard that a doctor has died after having both the doses of vaccine and he succumbed to covid-19 so we all want to know what is the real effectiveness of these vaccines i have taken a vaccine i have taken both doses of vaccine and it's been uh, more than 3 months but am i really protected do i want to know the data what happens if i get the disease now there is nothing that uh, totally prevents me from getting a disease okay once if i get the disease how do i take care of myself this is the question that bugs all the healthcare professionals now this data has been uh, touched by dr pajju i i'll just go through uh, the same data in a different way the cdc breakthrough data is around 10262 infections were reported mind you this is not a rare thing this is breakthrough data as given by the cdc 10000 infections but when you consider that the united states has immunized almost half of its population that is roughly 150 million people they have uh, immunized and only 10262 infections have been reported then you will feel the confidence okay among these 6444 are females this is one place where the males have got the better end of the stick now any other statistic you take in medicine the males are always at the losing end you have higher rates of mortality from mi you have higher rate of mortality from covid 19 you have higher rate of infections with covid 19 every damn that thing is for men but perhaps here females are outnumbering men and median age of reinfection is 58 years i tell this because there are some people who died with breakthrough infections and the uh, percentage of people who died with breakthrough infections is 2% 2% and then the median age of people who died with a, a breakthrough infection is 82 years mind you it is 82 years so only the old and frail have died in the us with breakthrough infections 
and out of these 64% were infected with uh, different variants now one uh, wise doctor has questioned me now if people with covid 19 the mortality rate is 1.2% in india right now and people after vaccination if they are in, uh, infected the mortality rate is 2% how can you say that the vaccine is better now you see that question carefully now the mortality rate in india the case fatality rate not the infection fatality rate mind you the case fatality rate is 1.2% if you take infection mortality rate it will be around 0.6% now case fatality rate in re in uh, breakthrough infections if it is 2% how can you say that the vaccines are better now my answer to that would be see all these among all these people the chance of infection itself has come down drastically why the mortality is more i'll come back to it i'll come back to it but you have to remember that if you take people who are vaccinated and if you take people who are not vaccinated the mortality is much much higher in those who that are not vaccinated you cannot compare in those who got infects infected with vaccine and who are not infected without vaccine see this is a false comparison the comparison should be the mortality rate among the people who died uh, who take, took vaccine and the mortality rates among the people who did not take vaccine and then if you see there is an eloquent example of israel you see the graph there from the moment they have started vaccination the infection rates have fallen like anything and 8th june 2021 as of yesterday the new cases in israel are zero let that sink in ladies and gentlemen the new cases in israel are zero as of yesterday and that has been possible because of two things one the wide coverage of vaccination they could give and the second is the rapidity with which they have given the vaccinations see the rapidity is very important not to allow the variants to grow now some detractors of vaccination they say that vaccines give increased pressure on the virus to mutate and then you must have seen the statements given by the uh, nobel prize winners like lak montaner who said two things one he said some vaccines may have antibody dependent enhancement the other thing he said is there will be immune pre- evolutionary pressure on the viruses from which more mutations can happen there is some truth to increase the mutations following vaccination if we don't vaccinate rapidly if we rapidly vaccinate all the citizens of the world quickly and effectively then there is no chance of a new variant to come up even without vaccination even without vaccination as the people that are infected are increasing if the virus is infecting the rest of the people the chance of mutation will be higher even without vaccines that's what lakman tener got wrong that's what he was when he was telling about the vaccination the other alternative he is giving to the world is to go for a herd immunity in which more number of people will die and more mutants will be produced anyway that is the thing that you should understand antibody dependent enhancement anyway is not a major factor with covid 19 vaccinations that has been proven okay and the second example i'll give you is the united states see there the how the graph is falling after the vaccinations have come over and then when you compare it with brazil you will see how the vaccines are working yesterday there were almost 52000 cases in brazil and a huge mortality and then unlike india the case numbers have not fallen in brazil they're just maintaining like that it's just like an endemic there it's not waves anymore it's continuing covid destruction that is happening in brazil and if we don't want to go there we have to immunize our population carefully now i'll give you more heartwarming uh, news this is the apollo health worker study the apollo has done it dr prajit must be a part of this and uh, among 3235 healthcare workers who were immunized 
for which for whom covid shield was given only 85 infections were noted uh, after the vaccinations and only 65 percent of uh, uh, infections were noted after both the doses and what they have told is the protection from the infection was around 97 percent the hospitalization was required only 0.06 percent of those who were infected and then you see the aims data also i'll come back to the aims data now nejm data is says that the chance of the infection following the vaccination is higher in the real world i i shouldn't say reinfection here this is breakthrough infections it is higher in 1.19% is the chance of breakthrough infections that's what nejm has pointed out this is may 6 mind you and then fortis has come with a study this was actually published in Diabetes and Metabolic Syndrome Clinical Research and Reviews. One Dr. Anup Agrawal, if I get it right, is the chief editor of the journal also. Now, he published a small single center study in which 113 were vaccinated. And then among them, 28 took COVID, Covaxin and 85 took Covishield. And then the breakthrough infections are 13.3%. Mind you, this is the data from India. But this is a single center study. 13.3 is not a joke. We have to be really careful about this. We'll come back to it after we do the AIMS data. AIMS data says this. There were 63 breakthrough infections in AIMS. These are reported. I could not get to the original paper. I tried. But this is what they have reported themselves in the media. Among these, 53 received Covaxin. 10 have received Covishield. These are breakthrough infections, 63 of them. And among them, actually breakthrough infections, like the definition Dr. Prajit has told, after two weeks of the second dose, 36 people have got infection. And then what they have told, these are the two variants that are there in the majority of the people who are infected. The B16172, that is the Delta variant, and B117, that is the Alpha variant. Now, when I see all the variants, I, uh, it reminds me one small thing, how WHO is totally influenced with China, why the original strain was not given any name, I don't get it, perhaps we should question the WHO, there should be some name for the original D614G, what is D614G called, it's totally forgotten, now alpha starts with UK, and the next generation which follows COVID-19 will think that UK has started this entire thing. And AIM study, one important thing is there was no death reported among the people who have taken both the doses of vaccine. That is really reassuring. Now, the infections and the variants. Okay, the Delta variant that uh, we have already talked about, this is one of the most notorious variants which has hit us hard with the second wave. And all over the world, people are really worried. And UK, they think that the third wave is going to be because of the Delta the variant. And then 60% of those who got infected after both the doses had the Delta variant. And 77% of those who got infected after the first dose had the Delta variant. And Covishield data, this is Public Health England data. Uh, they wouldn't call it Covishield. They call it Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Has 33 protection percent of protection is there after the first dose and then 59.8 percent after both the doses now 59.8 let us let us call it 60 60 is not a great number mind you 60 is not a great number but still 60 percent protection is what you are expecting from your annual flu shot okay when you are taking vaccination against h1n1 60% is the protection that you are anticipating and still you are recommending it. Now Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is much more effective for the other variants and even for the Delta variant, B6112, B16172, it is 60% effective after both the doses. Now UK has a bit confused the world. Initially they said four to six weeks after that you have to give the second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine. After that, they published a paper which has told that after 12 weeks, the protection with the AstraZeneca vaccine raises above 80%. Then we wrote to ICMR, I wrote to Minister, Dr. Harshwardhan, I wrote to anyone who is going to listen 
to say that it has to be postponed beyond uh, 12 weeks so that we can give vaccination for more people and then we can uh, increase the effectiveness of the vaccine also. Then the government has changed its stance and then they have taken it off from six to eight weeks and then they made it to 12 to 16 weeks. Now the United Kingdom is saying that because the Delta variant is coming, because the Delta variant is coming, and because Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has only 33% protection for the Delta variant after the first dose, they want to bring these booster doses closer. That is the thinking that is going on. And in India too, we have to ask the government to change the guidelines again to bring the booster dose of Covishield closer. This is important because we'll get at least 60% efficacy after the second dose, if we take it early. And as far as co-vaccine is concerned, even co-vaccine is effective against the Delta variant, but it is also 1.9 times, sorry, 1.9 times less effective against this Delta variant. This is the data given out by um, the Bharat Biotech themselves. So definitely there is reduced efficacy, even with mRNA vaccines, as far as the Delta variant is concerned. Is going to be a notorious variant. The new variants, Dr. Pradyut has told everything, but a Vietnam variant that is going to come, it is not yet a variant of concern. It is an amalgamation of the Alpha and Delta variants. It is taking up, along with the mutations that are there in the Delta, one deletion at 144 that is going to add to this, and that is going to cause more havoc uh, starting from Vietnam. That's what is WHO thinking. WHO is closely monitoring this strain. This is not at a variant of concern, mind you. It is a variant of interest as of now. So new variants are going to come. So what do we need to do? We need to be alert. Like uh, we have to fortify our INSACOG and then di diagnose these variants early and then prepare new vaccines for that. PGA Chandigarh study. Again, I'll not go into the details of this. Uh, the important things I'll tell you. 1.6% is the breakthrough infection risk. Among people who received both doses of vaccination, 1.6% is the breakthrough infection rate. But important thing is, among people who are unvaccinated, 6.4 people got the infection. Then you see the difference. 6.4 in the unvaccinated, 1.6 in the total vaccinated, that means almost 75% reduction in the infectivity is there. Almost 75%. It doesn't mean that people who do not take vaccine are all going to be infected. They're around 6.4% were infected and people who have taken were 1.6%. This is not a great difference, but 75% is really important. That is the uh, thing that are, we are going to see. This was published in NEJM in June. Now, We'll go into the, some of the treatment aspects. Dr. Uh, Sanjeev, sir, please cut me whenever I am exceeding the time because uh, COVID has become a passionate subject for me after MIs. So if at all, I can go on and on, but if, please uh, stop me. I'll, no, no, you, you can continue, but uh, you can we have us, no? 25 questions online. So uh, I'll, no I'll just grab this up. I, I'll just try to, uh, some important things. The okay. infections post-vaccine, Two types, again, we have seen one after both doses and second after both the doses. The reasons are, see, some of the people are immunosuppressed. These include elderly, these include people on steroids, these include people with malignancy, these include people with solid organ transplant. These are not going to have enough antibody response even after the vaccination. Let us say, for example, in Pulse Heart Center, I gave vaccination to 32 people on uh, July, June, uh, 20, uh, January 25th. And then for the second dose, before the second dose, that is after four weeks, what I have done, I have drawn a blood sample for all these people and measured the antibodies in these people. Um, who have received COVID shield uh, on January 25th, after four weeks, 31 people developed protective antibodies. 1% did not develop protective antibody. That is uh, a patient with who is 74 year old. Meaning 
that the elderly do not develop antibodies like the young so breakthrough infections are going to be in those people in whom the chances of antibody development is low and when you bring up the antibody subject when you bring up the antibody subject they could not still believe uh, 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 prove that uh, the antibodies can be measured as a uh, surrogate for your ability to protect yourself because in aim study what they have shown is even people with antibodies got infected that is important so tomorrow if you measure your neutralizing antibodies and then say that you have 200 or 2000 and then if you remove mask then maybe you may come in for a surprise please be careful you have to take care of yourself with all the precautions that is there vaccine prevention of course protection will of course be complete after two doses when they were showing that uh, uh, mr anil wis got uh, affected who is the health minister in a particular state uh, after a first dose after taking the uh, uh, first dose after six days he got infected uh, the doctors got really appalled why is this even news because he has taken one dose after six days he got infected that that might happen there is no news there the vaccination protection will start two weeks after the second dose so we need to be careful okay now this is important why the mortality was 2% in those who got breakthrough infection one reason i already told that breakthrough infections happen in the elderly and in those with uh, immunosuppression state and the second reason is this breakthrough infections are always diagnosed late this is very very important for you to understand even for the doctors it is very important even today morning one patient called me and asked me my daughter is having uh, she is going to go abroad but she has taken a vaccine some 6 days ago they want to do a test for her rt pcr test but will that not be positive because she has taken a vaccine 6 days ago means people still believe that vaccination is going to give a false positive result this is wrong this is what we have to enforce because of this single notion i have seen people losing their lives why because after the vaccination they get fever and they don't get the rt pcr done because they think that it will be positive anyway even those who get for it positive they'll think that it is positive because of the vaccine and they don't have the disease that's why the diagnosis gets delayed that's why the mortality is going to be higher so we need to be careful so most people i can't say most many people still believe that the vaccination causes a positive test result and then ima should take its stance tell out some important things like this spread this knowledge all around to the people saying important things like this so that people understand some believe that the vaccinations uh, effects are 100% and wouldn't test wouldn't take a mask and then they are so super confident that i've got my two doses of covaxin and then i am on the top of the world nothing can affect me even malaria will not come let the mosquitoes bite so that is the amount of confidence some people have this also has to be put in place see vaccines won't give you 100% protection they'll give you protection against death also only when you respond it respond properly it doesn't mean that god will protect you if you jump into the water in the middle of the sea no god will protect you if you take care of yourself and wear a life vest in the beginning and then jump god will save you okay just like that vaccines also will save you if you behave properly only it doesn't mean that even if you don't take treatment after vaccination also you will survive that is not the protection that we are talking about you still have to do an early diagnosis you still have to treat be treated properly okay there is confusion between vaccine reactionary symptoms and viral disease this happens even with doctors doctors also say that's why i have taken a vaccine some 5 uh, days ago i am continuously running fever shall i take uh, paracetamol or not because there is another misconception saying that you cannot take paracetamol also after vaccination and this is totally wrong you can take even uh, uh, your regular uh, whatever analgesics that you take you can happily take them just because one doctor died after taking a diclofenac injection in chennai after vaccination it doesn't mean that you cannot take a diclofenac tablet 
that is totally different that was an anaphylaxis for the diclofenac injection that has that has killed the doctor not the tablet mind you people can take analgesic tablets after the vaccination if they have pains or body aches uh, uh, have the fever okay the problem is if the fever persists even after 5 days after vaccination they should get it tested and the rt pcr should be done in these people not just rapid antigen test and then say that you don't have the disease rapid antigen test the sensitivity is pretty low and even the rt pcr sensitivity is uh, is around 70% so even if you have a negative rt pcr test following two doses of vaccination you still have symptoms still you can't rest easy you have to test yourself with other means the one thing is you can get a hrct test if you continuously have fever even if you have a negative rt pcr test or you can do covid igm antibodies if the igm antibodies are positive it means that you have an active infection despite everything else that tells you see the association of infections with vaccination centers this we have dealt with at length we have to be careful now again rt pcr positive rt pcr negative you be very careful with these people who have rt pcr negative status and have persistent symptoms following vaccination they are the most difficult to people to be convinced they will be resistant for all sorts of treatment they think that the vaccine has caused the fever and they will show you as an evidence their negative rt pcr or negative rand or rapid antigen test and they will not listen to you when you say that they have a disease in the ct scan they will not only trouble you during the treatment they will also trouble you after discharge they'll put a case on you saying that the rt pcr is negative still the doctor was a fraud he treated me for covid 19 so be very careful with this most of the treatment following the vax disease following the vaccination is the same as per the native covid 19 disease most of the disease, most of the treatment guidelines now this is director general of health services they have given recently these guidelines they have removed the doxycycline they have removed the ivermectin but icmr still holds lot of doctors are still having confusion what are the icmr guidelines what are the uh, dghs guidelines which you need to follow and majority of the doctors don't follow either they have their own protocol each doctor has his own protocol and this has to be curbed and otherwise if we don't do this ladies and gentlemen we will be mired in lot of legal cases in the coming few months we have to put a proper uh, treatment protocol and everyone has to follow that protocol if icmr protocol has some problems we have to talk about it openly discuss it get it changed get it changed if we keep quiet that icmr will tell whatever it is they'll tell you to take chloroquine but we know that chloroquine doesn't work still we'll not raise your voice again the patients will cause a problem when they file a case against you they say that you did not follow icmr guidelines this is very important this is very important when we have to take care of it uh, sanjeev sir uh. and uh, regarding the role of remdesivir why so many controversies because the actt2 trial has shown benefit with remdesivir the solidarity trial that was who has done has did, uh, did not show any benefit with remdesivir and we are stuck here when the government is not saying either in favor or against the remdesivir what we need to ask the government is to sponsor a big trial with remdesivir and then give out the results so that we can all follow we are ready to get get in the enrolled into the uh, clinical trials our patients are ready to get enrolled into the clinical trials the government has to sponsor this why i am saying it is should be the government means if i do it as a study people may ascribe intentions to me it should be a government sponsored trial and then let us do it properly multi center trial randomized control trial and then show the world what good data india can produce that's when all this mouths who wag against india will be shut we have to give them real data remdesivir the important thing is people who get infected with covid after vaccinations they present quite late and remdesivir may not help in these people monoclonal antibodies similar case if they are delayed too long they cannot be given after 7 days there is no role recently i have seen a patient on ventilator giving been given antibody cocktail i cannot talk against them but the, that is the problem that is happening 
you have to understand when these monoclonal antibodies are effective steroid usage now one more study has come this has come uh, this week only this says that methylprednisolone is superior to dexamethasone in treating covid-19 infections the dose they have used ladies and gentlemen is 1 mg per kg twice daily methylprednisolone i see lot of difficult difficult to go doses are going out with methylprednisolone i have seen one 28 old year old doctor been treated with 125 mg of salimedrol three times a day and 24 mg of dexamethasone three times a day and we have to educate our brethren regarding the doses of uh, steroids cdc has published a data on mucormycosis this week the data came from india the pga people have uh, published data i urge you all to read that data which tells you clearly that people who were given antibiotics and steroids there is a direct correlation the p value is significant for these people to be infected with mucormycosis so no longer we can say that steroids have a no role in mucormycosis anyway the covid has suppressed their immunity no steroids have been shown to have direct role with the uh, mucormycosis so we need to be careful as far as anticoagulation is concerned in covid 19 this is again in respect to both uh, unvaccinated and vaccinated people there is a multi platform trial that was done and then in march 12th they have given out this trial this is a big trial with active for a attack and remap cap all these three people platforms have come together and then they have shown the futility of therapeutic anticoagulation in people who are critical with covid 19 now a lot of people are giving a therapeutic anticoagulation in these people but they have shown conclusively that it doesn't work okay see the survival graphs both are together and the same platform in may 7 on may 17th they have given another they published another study and this time the remap cap study investigators have shown benefit with therapeutic anticoagulation in those people who are moderately sick with covid so perhaps in moderately severe patients you can use therapeutic dose anticoagulation that is 60 mg twice daily of clexin and then once they have critical disease there is no point even if you give correct the therapeutic doses of clexin this is an important distinction mind you it is our instinct to believe otherwise moderate people therapeutic anticoagulation was shown to be superior and severe critical disease uh, prophylactic anticoagulation is better that is remap cap trial and 2 dg we don't have it yet for every patient but a few people we could procure and we could give it and then mind you it is not a life changing or ground breaking path breaking uh, uh, medicine it definitely helps in people requiring oxygen but not those who are too advancedly off because it affects the viral replication it doesn't modify the immunity so it has to be sufficiently given early in the disease but at the same time in people who are requiring oxygen that means it has to be juggled exactly what time the 2 dg has to be given and then mind you the study that the drdo has conducted along with the red labs was this very small trial and then we need a pretty big trial to see the real effect of 2 dg tocilizumab i am coming to the last few slides of mine tocilizumab this is an important trial the recovery trial which has given the world dexamethasone for covid 19 the same group has given tocilizumab also so it has they have shown that tocilizumab not started too late may help people and when did they start tocilizumab for anybody who had a saturation of less than 92% for those who have a crp level of more than 75 in those people if tocilizumab was given the mortality rate was significantly reduced at 28 days okay whenever you are starting tocilizumab you have to get a crp value done and you have to do your procalcitonin to rule out a secondary infection you can also dependent on serum lactates also in in diagnosing a secondary infection but you have to believe uh, understand that a salbutamol inhalation also may increase the lactate levels spuriously so we have to be careful about interpreting the lactate levels in people who are receiving salbutamol and similarly if you are following a wbc count you have to remember that methylprednisolone alone will increase the wbc count 
that is not a surrogate in the absence of fever to diagnose a clinical secondary sepsis okay so you have to fall back on procalcitonin or your serum lactates and your clinical signs rather than wbc count when a patient who is receiving methylprednisolone you have to be careful about that and antibiotic usage almost none people we are treating with dexamethasone azithromycin hydroxychloroquine whatever antibiotics that are being given even before or after or after discharge also please remember that antibiotics have no role in the treatment and then they have shown to be increased association with fungal diseases increased antibody resistance and antibody induced diarrhea has been so common in icc use and we have to be careful about the usage of antibiotics ladies and gentlemen the infection following the vaccinations is a difficult thing please don't take it easy because the mortality of it is 2% when the average infection mortality is only 1.2% this is because a delay in the diagnosis a delay in the treatment because of misconceptions that are deeply rooted in our society so we need to change the narrative we need to tell the people that these infections are possible yet the vaccination is important whenever we say that these infections are important there is a vaccine hesitancy we have to balance them both and tell people that the vac while vaccination is tremendously and paramountly important we also need to give importance to treating those people who get infected after vaccination and there lies our art and science in dealing with these people thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you for a patient hearing thank you uh, dr mukherjee thank you very much hello am i audible to all yes sir yeah now uh, dr mukherjee thank you very much for that excellent uh, uh, lecture you have given now you see uh, there are a lot of questions here i will go through them one by one and uh, i request any of the panelists to answer uh, the question if it is uh, if the question is to somebody i'll name them otherwise uh, i will not uh the question which is commonly there in the chat is regarding pregnancy vaccination vaccination and interaction of vaccine with other vaccines like tt arv and uh, other thing uh these are the two questions which has been asked by many people so i, I request one of the panelists to please answer that i'll take the pregnancy uh, dr yeah. prajit can answer yeah, that yeah. pregnancy vaccination is a contentious issue this is because we know that the people with pregnancy and covid have an increased mortality so we need to protect them but we are not able to protect them because we don't have proper vaccines now the data with mrna vaccines was published in lancet and then which showed in around 30000 people who were pregnant and given vaccination they had safe pregnancy and delivery so pregnancy and vaccinations they have accepted the cdc was offering vaccines to even people with vaccine pregnant who are pregnant similarly the jcvi in uk also offers pregnant people vaccination but predominantly they advise mrna vaccines because these people are young viral vector vaccines perhaps have a problem in these people so either we have to take up the mrna vaccine which is going to come and then vaccinate these pregnant people or we will have to wait until any covaxin study that comes in these pregnant people or we have to do one of those things meanwhile we have to wait and shield these pregnant people carefully government of india doesn't recommend giving vaccines to pregnant people it recommends that vaccination may be given to all uh, lactating women lactating women can take safely but pregnant women have to wait because the vaccines that are available with us now are not properly tested in pregnant ladies and the mrna vaccines are not yet available in india radhiu the second uh, answer uh, regarding the interaction of the vaccine with other vaccines the general guidelines sir says sir that if you are taking other vaccines you have to give substantial gap there are no particular guidelines as i am aware of but i think generally they say at least if you are taking a, for example a flu vaccine give at least about 3 to 4 weeks time and then go for the next vaccine but uh, as far as i am uh, aware i don't think there are any particular guidelines as such okay now the other question is is it good to test all vaccinated people after 14 days regarding the igg antibody actually yeah. uh, sir 
you want to go through the mm-hmm. testing of antibodies they say is not really going to be much useful protocol because even after as sir has said in his speech that even if you are developing enough antibodies again you, you are likely to get infected so it is always better to take the precautions rather than testing the antibodies and becoming confident or super confident okay uh, now okay. i will go I to the question answer pardon i will add a small bit to the antibody question okay yeah they see whenever they are getting the antibodies tested they have to be careful in what kind of antibodies they are testing two important caveats one our antibody tests are not divine we our rt pcr itself is 70% sensitive antibody tests are neither that accurate nor that sensitive you have to be very careful about them number one number two covid shield is a spike protein uh, uh, virus uh, the vaccine so it is a viral vector vaccine which produces antibodies only against the spike protein and there are some laboratories which uh, test only against the nucleocapsid antibodies so these people may have negative nucleocapsid antibodies still they may have anti uh, spike antibodies so please don't uh, get it tested and then be worried about it you may still have cell mediated immunity even if you don't have enough antibodies still you may have cell mediated immunity also so please don't worry about the now the next question is what is the causative factor for new mutations is it covid inappropriate behavior or vaccine induced breakthrough infection i think as uh, we told in the speech in the talk ki these new variants if if everybody is vaccinated as fast and as early as possible the chance of a new variant getting becomes very less but if the vaccination is slow and if most people are not vaccinated the herd immunity is still not achieved soon then these variation can be taken care can get increased and definitely i mean if you want to if you are telling that vaccines will produce variants that's not the case but if you earlier you vaccinate and fast you vaccinate the chance of variants being produced becomes less uh, other thing is people are asking regarding this the same thing like like pregnancy uh, can this vaccine be given to cardiac patients uh to one minute i, I think i have to just for some something as come one minute yeah uh to cardiac patients and uh, to patients who are uh, hiv positive or on cancer uh, therapy yeah cardiac patients all of the cardiac patients have to take this vaccine okay that is important because our patients are at an increased risk from covid the mortality rates have been consistently higher in people with cardiac disease so it is important for people with heart disease to take the vaccine so do they have to stop antiplatelets before taking the vaccine no they don't have to stop antiplatelets regarding anticoagulants all the newer anticoagulants they need not be stopped they can directly take the vaccine if someone is using warfarin or acitrom they can check their inr levels just like they used to do always and then if the inr is less than 3 they can safely take the vaccine even if it is more also there is only a risk of intramuscular hematoma nothing else so it is better that they take inr value and if it is less than 3 they can happily take it majority of the people are asking whether they can stop the medicines especially people who have been stented recently please don't stop these medications that is important today also i attended one of the vaccination drives people are asking me somebody is telling us to stop uh, anti platelet and anti i mean uh, blood thinning uh, medication for one day or two days then i advise them that it is not necessary you must continue with all the medications given now Prad- pradyut uh, yeah, uh, ji what is ecmo care under covid 19 what is ecmo care ecmo 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 is given to only those patients who are very severely ill who are requiring almost 100% of ventilatory requirements still their oxygen is unable to maintain they are uh, uh, unstable hemodynamically and then only the ecmo will be considered uh, otherwise not uh, i want to go back to the earlier question also because there was a, uh, addition to that apart from cardiac any lung cancer uh, cancer patients or even suppress can take see theoretically if you see because they will suppress they are more likely to get uh, complications of the covid so the vaccines should be given fully understanding that their immune response will be much slightly less than an immuno competent person but that doesn't mean that they should not receive the vaccine other question is why does infection occur occur after the first dose of vaccine 
on the fourth day, and Korat's score in HR CT scan showed five by twenty-five on the eighth day. Uh, see, the the vaccination, as we told, it, it, the robust immune response from the T cells and B cells will need two weeks from the second dose onward. From the after taking the booster dose, about two weeks it will take to produce a good robust immune response. So before that, you can get infected. Coming to the CORADS section, CORADS is different from the CT's severity score. CORADS tells us the number of uh, lobes or the lungs getting infected on the radiological list. For example, it may be CORADS 5, but the CT severity can be only 5. So, you know, that is the difference between the two. Uh, another question is, actually the cost, actually the CORADS score 15 by 25 and not 5 by 25. That was the typing error. Okay, sorry. This question. 15 by 25, they need to be careful, sir. They need, they need to be careful. careful. Yes. Immediately get admitted. 15 by 25 is no joke. Many questions are directed towards one particular point. That is, after the vaccination, how many months or days or years are we actually protected? I think this no. has been answered in the thing. Uh, but sir, uh, no. I think somebody gets... Nobody knows the how long the immunity will last as of now. None of the vaccines. Even with the mRNA vaccines, COVID shield, Covaxin, Sputnik, there are no reports as such that immunity is going to last how long. Still work is going on. That's why the guidelines say you take the two doses and take the precautions. Probably whether a booster is required after three months, six months, one year. In fact, there are now some work is going on for a pan-coronavirus vaccine so yeah, yeah, to cover the variants as well. Moderna vaccine has seven-month data, which shows that continued protection is there at seven months. And then though Moderna and uh, Pfizer, both CEOs come forward saying that their booster will be required, still uh, there is no evidence as to whether the booster will really be required. So we'll have to wait for the data. One more thing is, uh, suppose a person is COVID positive, doesn't know that, and he takes a vaccine. What? Is it fatal? Perhaps to the other people who came along to, with him to the vaccination center. So that is more important because, see, during uh, infection, if he doesn't know, and goes to the vaccination center, at that time, he could infect others. That's why whenever you go to the vaccination center, you should consider all the others as COVID positive only and take adequate precautions. No chit-chatting in the COVID vaccination center, no removing and taking water there. You have to put on your mask, get your job done, and then come back home quickly. So there is no study which tells you that if there is an active infection during the COVID-19, Along the time, at that time, if you take vaccination, there is no big harm. The harm is if you have a prior infection, and then if you think the symptoms are because of the vaccine itself, and then delay in seeking the diagnosis or treatment, then it could become severe. That is an, an important thing that you should be aware of. I received both doses of COVID shield and still got infected. What should I do now post recovery? And the most important question, whether Cadbury is good or Nestle is good. Covaxin or Covishield? As we have presented the data that even there are few patients who are going to get reinfected after taking two doses of vaccine also as per the breakthrough infections. But as we shown, the both Covishield and Covaxin, I think Covaxin 0.13% was the incidence of breakthrough infections and Covishield was 0.07% of people got infected. So even if you get infected, as Sir has shown in one of his presentation, there are no deaths. As per, I think it was the AIMS study. There are no deaths. Hospitalization is very less. You will get very mild infection, so please don't worry. But go ahead and take the vaccines of two, two doses both. Okay. Uh, one question from one Dr. Afreen. She says, I tested COVID antibody and I was positive and my antibody is 120 and my wife's antibody is 240. What does it mean and what and when should we take COVID vaccine? See, anytime if you get an infection and then develop antibodies, it doesn't matter whether you develop antibodies or not. The moment that you should take the vaccine is three months after recovery. That is what the government of India has stipulated. Previously, at least six to eight weeks they have told. Now they have told that it is three months from the recovery that you need to take a vaccine. And there is one interesting study that has come today which said that post-infection, the vaccination may not be required also because they are 89% protected at six months. Post-infection, you may not require a vaccine at all. So you should give the chance to people who are not infected. 
that is a new study that has come up today but the government of india guideline is simple you take the vaccine three months after recovery even if you have taken the first dose prior to the infection also again the second dose you should take three months after recovery dr mukherjee sir post vaccine fever five days need rt pcr and what if the person got fever and lose motion after five days get an rt pcr there is no doubt even if the rt pcr is negative also please watch yourself carefully if the symptoms do not come down you can get a hrct test done after 7 days or you can monitor your cbp crp and d dimer if these go up you can go and seek medical attention this is very important even at 5 days if you even get a negative rt pcr or negative rapid antigen please don't presume that you don't have covid infection that is very very important that subset only what i was referring to in my talk that subset has to be really careful and then receive adequate treatment if they have a infection in the lungs or if the inflammatory markers go up then they should get a proper treatment otherwise they will be in a trouble there is a question on uh, remdesivir and flaviflu uh, why it has been given and uh, whether it is really helpful why so much controversy on remdesivir remdesivir i have talked about in the study as a yes. trial actually yes. uh, we don't have indian data definitely yeah, the data that, from no. us says that the treatment duration will come down okay solidarity trial did not show any benefit with remdesivir that's why the confusion but we have to do our own study because our variants are different our clinical presentation is different our medical management is different so we have to do our own studies now if you see indian patients we see a lot of uh, thrombotic complications here i have seen a 21 year old girl getting a coronary thrombus after recovering from covid so we have a lot of thrombotic complications and we cannot go by the western data we have to manufacture uh, we have to seek our own data we have to do our own researches and come to conclusion as far as favipiravir is concerned favipiravir never had a great data but uh, in the last one week there was a a trial that was published which has given some favorable data on favipiravir favipiravir whether it reduces the uh, hospitalizations or reduces the viral load is still a matter of debate we were giving favipiravir because we did not have nothing much to give for these people who are mildly symptomatic what will we give them doxycycline won't help ivermectin has not shown a definitive improvement azithromycin has uh, not shown to be improved uh, shown any improvement in solidarity trial chloroquine is gone mul- from multiple trials paracetamol of course we always give and symptomatic treatment we always give we did not have enough data to give any particular drug molnupiravir is being extensively studied perhaps molnupiravir will give us some uh, respite if it uh, affects in uh, mild infections perhaps we can do it better Uh, one one comment i want to make yeah, here yeah please carry uh, in it is the study was done which we know that 85% of patients are either mildly or they are very mildly affected in covid so they they found that all work is being done on the 15% of seriously ill patients like tocilizumab everything but nobody is considering on why these 85% remain mildly infected so they found that in these asymptomatic people their innate immunity is very high in the sense their uh, interferon gamma levels are high their uh, t cells killer t cells are levels are high and their macrophage are more phagocytic so if somehow you can increase these levels in the early stages we are talking about uh, antiviral drugs if you can increase these three components in their immunity innate immunity you can fight the infection say in the initial first week of the virus because they will reduce the viral mul- multiplication itself so in fact i have done a small study that is going to be published soon on pidotimod which is an immuno modulator and pidotimod exactly does these three things it increases interferon levels it increases the killer t cells and it increases the macrophage activity and we have found excellent results if used early because the same immune system when in the third week becomes you know hyperimmune and causes cytokine storm so if you want to use this same thing with the vitamins i think there was initial recently published paper also came the role of vitamin d other things in this so that's one thing i was wanting to say in the early stages of viral infection one dr ankita singh is asking which is the better in side effects like covid shield or covaxin 
think uh, i think both the data there were some concern about the the plotting deformity with the covid shield but then it was found that see it was found that whenever you make a vaccine for example the sputnik vaccine which is going to come soon they collected the whole length of the sg in the covid shield there was a few uh, part of that sg gene was modified by some other component i don't remember the name of it so it was that component which was producing this platelet abnormalities and thrombosis so that is only one thing uh, which went uh, in the paper but more than that i think all vaccines are relatively safe uh one last you want to say yeah real question Uh, yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Carry on. Mukherjee. VHT is the one uh, that is there. The vaccine induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia. That is what has been reported with viral vector vaccines. Viral vector vaccines predominantly. What we know is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Also reported with Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Also the same complication was reported. The rare cases of cerebral venous thrombosis as well as portal venous thrombosis, and uh, these were reported after these vaccines rarely. and then the incidence is much much less it's not something to be worried about the incidence is one in around 4 lakh people so that much of less incidence is there and then indian data has shown that it is even more less the, the uh, com- uh, clotting uh, thrombotic complications are very less after the covid shield vaccine that's what icmr has told so in indian population perhaps this thrombotic tendency is less but still we need to do more transparent studies to understand this covaxin is uh, has always been safe there are no issues at all reported with covaxin so far uh, pradyut one of the patients took uh, covid shield and developed severe urticaria 7 days after that now the question is can we change the vaccine no the viral the changing of vaccines or mixing of vaccines has not yet been approved though trials are going on but as of now the guidelines permit us to use only what vaccine you have taken earlier as dose one that only you have to take as dose two you cannot change the vaccines as of now but in coming few months if the trial reports positive then we don't know thrombocytopenia and covid illness is due to thrombosis yeah it is due to pf4 antibodies that uh, act in uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia it is a similar mechanism that comes uh, from the edta that is there in the vaccine doses and then because of this pf4 antibodies vitt may can happen that uh, but i have told that it is pretty rare nothing to worry about it as of now but it can rarely happen we have to be careful about it there is treatment for that if you recognize early what we have to do is we have to avoid heparin for these patients even if there is thrombosis what we can give is uh, newer anti coagulants or uh, we can give argatroban we can give fondaparin for these patients and then we should avoid platelet transfusions for these patients even if there is thrombocytopenia and then most importantly we have to give them iv immunoglobulins if we give them quickly these people have a tendency to recover fast but if the any patient who was who has taken a uh, viral vector vaccine and develops a thrombotic complication immediately the thing to do is a platelet count and see if the platelet count has fallen then you have to treat them carefully and then we can bring it or bring them out if with proper treatment uh, the final word regarding colchicin in covid and uh, high dose of vitamin d d3 3 to 6 lakhs interaction unit as pulse colchicin has been found to have a significant anti inflammatory activity that's why that's the reason why it is used and the dose they recommend is 0.5 mg twice daily for at least 2 2 weeks followed by 0.5 mg once daily this was a doctor from delhi who published his data recently and he presented his talk with dr bean from us and he he showed very encouraging results but a lot of still uh, data has to be presented but that's the reason why colchicin is uh, being recommended okay one more and- thing was asked uh, what was it dr sanjay there was vitamin, some- vitamin d3 high dose vitamin d there is nothing on this planet which cannot be cured by vitamin d every <laughs> time that is thing has only vitamin d all the research points to the vitamin d being helpful but there is no good quality paper which has shown beneficial thing with the vitamin d all see every disease for mi we used to say that vitamin d is beneficial for psoriasis they say vitamin d is beneficial 
vitamin d has been the vitamin vitamin e how it was in our childhood now vitamin d is like that tomorrow perhaps calcium is there is going to become like that i don't know but this fascination with vitamin d is not right for those people who have a deficiency definitely vitamin d has to be given but not as a blanket dose for everyone who has got covid okay one final question before we close platelet count 40000 with chronic liver disease having bleeding history can take vaccine Va- vaccine can be taken for the for him no doubt platelet count is no contraindication for taking but the profile suggests that there will be a severe immunocompromised status in the, with this patient so whenever the patient has such an immunocompromised patient we should not expect them to have adequate antibody response or adequate protective response even after vaccination that's why they should still be isolated they should still be taking care without getting infected that that is very important for them to understand i told one final question but this will be the last one seven week pregnant lady gets positive three weeks and took fabi flu before three weeks seven week pregnant lady gets positive before three weeks took fabi flu uh, she just gets to know that she is pregnant few days before whether to continue pregnancy or not fabi flu fabi flu fa- uh, fabi flu i think is uh, uh, no, not indicated actually if uh, in uh, no, she has taken if you are planning pregnancy Bagre, since she has taken and she knows she is pregnant after that Now, continue, continue with the pregnancy or not? See, that is a really difficult question because <laughs> Pavipiravir is shown to be teratogenic. Yes. Pavipiravir is shown to be teratogenic. Yes. We have to be careful. And I would advise, if it is not a precious pregnancy, I would advise uh, medical termination followed perhaps by... Uh, because Pavipiravir is a known teratogenic. We, we need to avoid in childbearing population. That's why... for any child bearing person if you are giving pavipiravir you have to make sure that they are not pregnant before you give pavipiravir that's important and please i i should ask for an mtp in this patient okay uh, so excellent dr pradeep bagre as usual and mukherji uh, every day on tv uh, we see uh, it is really it was really a great session more than 400 people have participated in this and they are i am getting uh, i mean uh, chat saying that the question answer session was really appreciable you know, so much time was given to answer questions maybe we might have left some but if uh, mayuri can forward these questions to both pradyut and uh, mukherji they will try to answer so that it can be forwarded to well people are happy with uh, the progress uh, before i go in for a word of thanks a word with mayuri and uh, dr sreeri yes, sir yes. thank you sir thank you for your presence uh, here and every every member of ima uh, appreciating your presentation both of you thank you sir thank you so much on behalf of uh, ima ms thank you mukherji sir and sukdeep sir thank dr you. b narendra reddy and sri ranga apkari any questions from uh, pediatrician and physician <coughs> dangerous uh, types both you both can ask your speaker sir spoke excellently <laughs> there are no doubts now except for uh, the uh, pediatric vaccination is uh, still uh, trials are going on let's wait for the results okay. sri rang thank you very much you are a frontline worker treated many covid patients mm-hmm. okay uh, before we close down uh, from uh, dr mayuri mk i call her mk dr mk and uh, dr saxena anything you have to add so that we can close it up yes sir so first of all i'll uh, take the opportunity to raise the poll the second poll so that the pa- panelists and participants can start taking that also okay it will be time saving yeah so on behalf of medical learning hub i would like to take the opportunity to thank imm ams headquarters to provide us the opportunity to conduct a national event with you it was really a very uh, wonderful full uh, webinar very knowledgeable uh, we uh, learned a lot today thank you so much to our speakers dr pradyut sir I, and dr mukherjee sir for taking out time in this covid era to share your experiences knowledge with 
with us. I would also uh, like to take the opportunity to thank all the panelists. Uh, uh, Jailal sir, I think he is busy, so he has left. But all yes, other yes. panelists also, Apkari sir, Reddy sir, uh, Shri Hari sir, Mohan Gupta sir, and Sanjeev sir, especially uh, for. Uh, supporting us in this uh, webinar. Sanjeev sir really worked hard with me. I was uh, really pushing him. I need speaker. I need this. So he has really helped me a lot for this. Uh, thank you so much. I would also like to thank Mylan Pharmaceutical for supporting us in the series of this COVID-19 webinars. Uh, we are uh, doing uh, webinars every alternate day. So mostly Wednesday, Saturday, you, you Really we have scheduled it so that the doctors are available and they can attend the different series of this uh, events. Uh, we have recorded this session and recording will be available on Medical Learning Hub platform in few days and we will be notifying to all the participants via emails. Also the participation certificate will be provided to them but in a week time. It will take a week time to share the participation certificates. We will also share the recording with uh, IMA, AMS, HQ so you can keep it on the national uh, uh, website if you want you can keep it there also uh, thank you so much sir okay, sure sir, like sir. can you unmute dr srirang apkari he is not able to unmute himself oh I'll, srirang, sir. i have asked to unmute sir can you please unmute now yeah you can please unmute him uh, sir is already unmuted he's not unmute. on sir please help him out to unmute I have just put the, this thing. Okay. Through. Anyway, anyway. Okay, Sridang, okay, sir. Sridang, sorry. Uh, uh, he, he is basically Sridang Abkari is a young uh, physician who organizes all our seminars. This time I have taken over from him. So next time I'll give it back to him once again. Uh, he was our speaker for the last uh, event. No words to thank you all. And uh, it was an excellent uh, presentation. I don't know why Dr. Suryakant is there, not there in the panelist. He has joined somewhere else. But anyway, uh, thank you uh, both uh, Pratyut and uh, Mukherjee. Thank you, Chairman, incoming Chairman and the members of IMAMS headquarters. Uh, thank you, Mohan Mukta. Uh, we hope to have many more uh, things like this with uh, good uh, topics of these type so that the people can benefit. Thank you once again and uh, good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. So we will be waiting here for a few more minutes. Panelists can leave. We will be here to take the poll questions. Okay. Thank you. So much, sir. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Wonderful session we had. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I'll get back to you. Thank you, Dr. Mukherjee. Uh, so I'll just share my screen again. So if uh, all the previous recordings of the events are available on COVID-19 Resource Center on Medical Learning Hub platform. Uh, if we can, we request you to visit this site so that you can. Uh, one second, it has just crawled from my end. So would request you to visit the uh, COVID-19 Resource Center to see the previous recording of the webinars on various to topics of COVID-19 and mucormycosis. We have many upcoming uh, events on COVID-19 vaccinations, reinfection, uh, the second wave, third wave, and uh, um, many different topics with the mucormycosis topics also we are having. We would request you to like our Facebook page uh, to uh, keep yourself updated or subscribe to our newsletter to stay tuned with the upcoming activities. Thank you. We'll be here for two more minutes to receive all the poll questions and then we will end the event. Once again, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the participants for providing us the opportunity to work with you. Thank you so much. We have received around 90% of the poll questions. We will be here for a minute more. Would request all of you to please take the poll questions. It will help us to improve ourselves.
ending the poll here. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating in this webinar. We see you in the next.